Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, I would like to show you how to use Avro in a Java project. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to place the Avro schema file that we created for the grading schema in the source directory of the Java project. So the default path is going to be source slash Avro. And the next step is to generate the Java classes from the .avsc file. I'll show you how to do that in this lecture. And the next step would be to use the generated Avro classes in the producer and consumer to produce and consume the messages. So let's go back to IntelliJ and then I will quickly explain about the build.gradle file and then we'll learn about the techniques to generate the Avro Java classes out of the schema. So I'm back in IntelliJ here. So this is the app that we set up in the previous lecture. And if you take a look at it in the plugin section, we have two different plugins. Number one is Avro, number two is Avro Base. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment this and comment this one. I will show you the difference between both of these options and I will show you my favorite option and then we'll go ahead with that option throughout the course. So uncomment this one and then click on the Gradle refresh icon. And after that, if you go a little bit down, we have the Avro dependency. This is fundamentally necessary for generating the Avro classes and then we have Avro tools and after that we have Kafka Avro serializer. This is one of the dependencies that's needed when we are going to interact with the schema registry but for now for this lecture we don't need that. And I'll talk about these two things in a bit but for now we can ignore this particular section and proceed further. So the next step that we are going to do is that we are going to be placing the greeting.absc file that we created in the previous lecture. So let's go back to the editor. So in the editor, we have this file, right? Let's copy this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the Avro folder inside the main folder. So this is the package where the plugin expects the Avro file to be. So in here, let's do this. And then let's create the file. It's going to be greetings.absc paste this file. So there you go. We have the greetings ABC file ready. One of the key things that we need to add is the namespace. So namespace is fundamentally important if you are working with Avro schema that's going to generate a Java class out of it. So this is the one which we will use as a package structure in our Java project. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give namespace. Another thing is it's going to be com.learn Avro. So this is the package I would like to have the schema generated to be placed in. One of the key thing is that if you click on the IntelliJ and then go to preferences and if you go to plugins, please go ahead and install this plugin, which is Apache Avro Ideal Schema Support. And this plugin is also available in community versions and I'm using a community version IntelliJ. The advantage with this is that it can take care of performing the auto complete or completion when you are working with Avro schema. So if you take a look at it in this case, if I just press enter and then press command or control space, you'll be able to get all these different options that are available for this given schema. So this is really handy, which can help you avoid a lot of typos and all those issues. So please go ahead and install the Avro schema plugin and you might have to restart the IntelliJ after that. So now we have this Avro schema file sitting in our Avro directory. So now the next step is how do we create the Java files out of it? So if you click on this Gradle tool window and then if you expand the grading app and if you expand the tasks, so in here you will see a specific folder named source generation. So in the source generation, you will notice a task named generate Avro Java. So what we are going to do, we are going to click on that. So what this is going to do is as soon as you execute the task, it's going to create the Java files from this Avro schema. So if we expand the build directory in here, you will notice that generated main Avro Java and you will notice this particular class, which is greeting being created out of the Avro schema that we have created. So I'm going to give you a quick comparison here. So this is our Avro schema and the name of the Avro schema matches with the name that got generated. And the other thing is the namespace com.learn Avro. This is a package where the generated class is being placed. And then if you go and take a look at it, this class is a, if we expand this, this is auto generated by Avro, do not edit directly. So it is always not recommended to edit this class at all. So always make sure you use this class by the task execution that we did just now, which is generate Avro Java. Okay. And then you will be able to create Avro records using this class, which I will cover in the following lectures. I hope you all understood the significance of namespace. Namespace is equal to the packaging structure that we are going to use in our Java project. So this is one approach of placing the generated class in the build directory. But the other approach, which I'm going to show you is one of my favorite approach. So let me comment this one out. 
and then enable this one so one of the difference between this approach and this approach is that in here we are using the avro base plugin not the avro plugin and the other thing is we are going to be using this particular task which is a generate avro task that's been defined over here one of the advantage with this approach is that you can customize the source directory and then you can also customize where you would like to place the avro directory or the generated classes in the output directory okay so you can perform customization on the avro generation task so this is one of the benefit with using the avro base plugin but you need to provide the generate avro task which is going to take care of reading the source directory and then placing the generated classes in the output directory so in here what we are going to do i'm going to do a quick refresh and then in the other tasks i believe you will notice a task named generate avro so this particular task is equivalent to what we have over here okay so the very first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to do a clean so by doing a clean it's going to delete the build directory as you can see there is no build directory right now and in here what i'm going to do go to the gradle and then click on the generate avro and then we got the build successful message so this is a clear signal that the gradle task was able to execute now what i'm expecting is that in the source directory let's do the reload from disk and then as soon as i do the reload from disk you can see right inside the java directory we have the greeting class and this is a class which got generated out of the schema that we have but this class is generated from the custom task that we defined in the build.gradle and i like this approach because your avro generated class is going to be part of the source code itself it's not part of the build directory and this is fundamentally necessary because anytime you have this code in a github and then clone this code in your local you do not want to have some additional task that needs to be performed in order to make sure that your local repo is compilation free by having this particular class as part of the source code itself is going to help you avoid that issue so we have the greeting avro record ready in the following lectures we will go ahead and use them to publish and consume these as avro records I hope you all were able to successfully do this in your local machine. If you have any questions or issues, please raise it in Q&A. I would be happy to help. This marks the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching.